and welcome to another video. In this video, I want to take a look at relative dates, but not just relative dates in general, which they're already pretty awesome, but using relative dates to add the necessary filter context so our visuals work the way that we expect them to. If you're interested in finding out more, stay tuned. Recently, I was helping out one of our customers and they had an interesting problem. The problem was that the DAX calculations were working inside of their chart, right? Inside of their table visualization that had some extra filters applied, but it wasn't really working the way they expected in the card visual. And so I was able to have an interesting conversation with the customer talking about filter context and understanding what filters are being applied to different visuals. But then the problem, of course, is, okay, now we understand why it's happening. How do we fix it? So here's what we got. Let me break it down for you very quickly here. I have this line chart. And in this line chart, I have a couple of measures. There's three measures here. The first one is our year to date sales. The next one is our prior year sales. So you can see year to date is in blue right here where my mouse is. The prior year is down here. So you can see that the current year is doing better than the prior year by a significant amount. The third measure that's present inside of this visualization is percent growth. So looking at this year, looking at April compared to April of last year, we are currently at 196% growth. That's pretty awesome. So if you're thinking about it right now, we are in June of 2023. And if I'm inside of June of 2023, that means we really don't have any sales for July, August, September, October, November, December, right? But for the first six months of the year, we're sitting between 189% growth to 207% growth. However, if you come up here and look at this card visual, which is using the exact same measure that's being used right here, which is just a simple differential year to date minus last year, year to date divided by last year, year to date, just that's it. The number is drastically different. And this is off putting, right? This is confusing. Why is it negative 1.9%? this year's year to growth compared to last year when we're crushing it for every single month. The reason for that is pretty obvious, right? The chart visual has this actual filter context. So it's comparing May year to date to May prior year year to date. It's comparing June to prior year June. The card visual only has sales for the current year up until June, or maybe there's a little bit in July. I don't think so. Let's see. Yeah, there's nothing. Oh, July has a little bit. Of, well, let's see. Yeah, yeah. July has like 20,000, barely anything, probably a day or two. So it only has sales up until June, right? You get the point. But what our measure does, our original prior year measures, our, our original prior year measure just says, okay, take all of the dates that are in the current filter context and go back and get the year to date sales for all those dates last year. Well, in the card visual, the filter, when you're thinking about dates, is really everything for 2023. Let me click on the funnel right here, and you'll notice when I click on the funnel, this is looking at everything for 2023. So when it goes back and gets prior year, it gets everything for 2022. This measure, this card visual, has no idea or no way of being able to tell that we're not done with 2023, that 2023 is not a complete date, so only get partial of 2022. We can solve this problem with DAX. What I can do is I can go over here and find my year to date prior year measure, which is very simple. It's return year to date sales, right? Return year to date sales for same period last year. So take all the dates in the filter context, go back one year. I could actually modify this and build a custom DAX calculation. I could say, let's capture the maximum date from the current year that actually has values and then let's go and calculate my total sales for the prior year up into the date that has so i could fix this using dax um, which is a fine solution however there's actually a really easy solution that we can use using relative dates and that's what i want to show you in this video now relative dates have a lot of great applications I come across customers all the time who do not take advantage of this capability and don't really know that it exists. And so what I'm going to do is over here in the filters pane, I have a couple of filters that I want to highlight and make sure I'm out of the way here. 
The main one that I'm worried about though is this right here. So I have a filter currently on year. And what I want to do is I want to add a relative date filter that captures all the dates up into really up until the current date. And so I'm going to do something that's a little bit tricky here. So let me show you. I'm going to go over to my date table and I'm going to grab the date column from the date table and drop it on my filters on this page. And then I'm going to do this right here. So I'm going to click. I got my date here. I'm going to change this from basic filtering to relative date. I'm going to tell it in the last what. This is the part that's actually tricky here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to say 12 in the last 12 months. Now, this is going to throw you off at first. You're going to say, Mitchell, that's not going to work because now you're getting dates from the prior year. So I'm going to apply filter. Here's why I'm not getting dates from the prior year. Because even though, even though this right here is actually getting prior year, May 16th of 2022 through May 15th of 2023, this year filter that we have right here, this year filter is actually going to kind of intersect with this one. So it's only going to return where those two intersect, which is the year 2023 and then all of the months for the year. In fact, the way you can see that now, I would also turn this into a relative date filter. So it's always the current year. Else, as soon as you hit 2024, you have to change that. Um, so we can change that as well. So let me show you. So right here we have our report. This looks awesome. That's what we're going for. It's exactly what we wanted. So we fixed it using relative date by understanding filter context and then making a change to that. If you're like Mitchell, I'm in this video, I'm watching it. I'm a little bit new to DAX. I don't know filter context. I have two awesome videos for you on our YouTube channel. One I just released, we did it live. It was a one and a half hour session on just understanding filter context in DAX. And I actually covered this example in there as well. And then there's another video that I did that's a three hour DAX fundamentals, which is a really great video as well to help ramp you up on DAX. So if you want to dive deeper into understanding DAX and how to author it and you're not quite there yet, definitely take a look at those videos. This is about something different in this one, right? So I'm going to click on the year. Let's get rid of it. I'm going to bring the date in again. Watch this. This is a super cool trick. If you've hung out this long, paid attention, you're going to pick up something pretty cool. And I'm going to say relative date filter again. So I have a relative date filter here that goes back and grabs the last 12 months because obviously there's 12 months in a year. I haven't quite tested this for December to make sure it works, but it should. If not, you could change it to 13 to be sure. And then I'm going to tell it is in the current, is in this year, and then apply filter. So this is actually going to grab everything for 2023. But then, of course, this limits that result set to only up until the current date, which is actually May. All right. My data goes to June because I updated it, but it's actually only May when we're recording this video. Now, it still works. And this is a beautiful thing. And this is an elegant solution. The downside of this would be what? The downside of this is that it doesn't work across all your reports. So if you bring these measures into a new report, you're going to have to remember to add those relative date filters. The other downside of this, and it uh, it's something that I should tell you, is I'm somebody who enjoys more dynamic capability. So if I were on, if you and I were doing a one-on-one -on -one virtual mentoring call and I'm teaching you DAX, helping you work through a problem, and we were building this solution, the one thing that I would caution you here is I'd say, what happens if somebody comes in here and clicks a prior year? What if somebody clicks 2022? If you click 2022, I'd want to see sales, year-to-date sales for 2022 versus year-to-date sales for 2021. And I'd want this year to date percent growth to reflect 2022 versus 2021. By doing relative date filters, it does hinder you there. It does limit you with that capability. So that's something that if that's what you wanted from that perspective, then I would probably, I would definitely go into my DAX measures and I would make them to be specifically the prior year calculation is really the one we need to change because the rest of it actually kind of just works within the filters. I'd take the prior year and I would redesign it so that it's only going back to the prior year since it's a year to date and it's only getting the dates up until the current date. That's how I would do it. And if you're unsure of how to do that, again, watch our other YouTube videos on how to get those running totals. All right, that's going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button and also hit that bell icon so that you can get notifications anytime we release new videos on our channel. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.